What's up guys? Today we're wiring speakers and subwoofers. We're gonna look at single voice coil, dual voice coil, and how to wire each of them in series or parallel. And we're also gonna go over probably one of the most important ratings of a speaker, and that is impedance. And I'm gonna show you why my two power acoustic gothic subs, which are both dual four ohm voice coils, actually have an impedance of 0.5 ohms. Also be sure to stick around because I'm gonna show you how to tell which of your speaker terminals is positive and which one is negative, even if they're not marked. Let's do it. Okay, so here we have a couple of just regular plain speakers. These are called single voice coil uh, because there's only one terminal. So these are dual 8 ohm speakers, meaning they're both 8 ohms. And first, I'm going to show you how to hook these up to where you can make these two 8 ohm speakers a 4 ohm speaker, connecting to this is going to be our amplifier, the positive and negative. Well, first off, let's just say we connected a positive to our positive and our negative to our negative, that would show eight ohms at the amplifier. Now, in order to lower it to four, which is called parallel, parallel always lowers it, we would just simply hook then our negative to our negative and then our positive to our positive from both speakers. Now, that's, like I said, that is called parallel. Now, to make these go from eight ohms to 16 ohms, actually doubling them, what we would then do is you connect one speaker to the positive, and then the negative of that speaker actually connect to the positive of your other speaker. And then the remaining negative goes to your amplifier. Now this will show a 16 ohm load at the amplifier. And that is single voice coil. Now let's check out dual voice coil. So here's a pair of power acoustic subwoofers. They have a dual four ohm voice coil. So that means we have two sets of terminals per speaker. I have connected these wires to each of the terminals and the blue is positive and the brown is negative. So in theory, if I connect one of these terminals to a voltmeter and then I set my voltmeter to the impedance reading, uh, the lowest impedance reading, which is the upside down horseshoe, that is ohms. And as you see, it should be four ohms, right? Well, this one sits at 3.3. Let's go ahead and check the other terminal. Okay, there we go. 3.2 and now if we knock on the subwoofer or even knock on the table you'll see it's reactive so it kind of changes but this these both kind of set at 3.3 let's go ahead and check the other one now that's 3.3 on each coil and we'll check the first one on the second speaker there we go we're connected that sets at about 3.3 let's try the other one Huh, okay, so that means now that each of our coils equals 3.3 ohms. So now that means that I can have two different ways of setting this up. And we're just gonna pretend for now like they're four ohm. And um, I can either have a final impedance of two ohms per speaker or eight ohms per speaker. Now, the first thing we're gonna be talking about is parallel. And that means just connecting one right to the other, connecting one positive, to the other positive, and then connecting the negative to the other negative. Now this should give us a reading somewhere around half of what each uh, coil is. And as you can see, mine, when they are in parallel, actually go to about 1.4, 1.5. Now again, that is called parallel, when you connect positive to positive, negative to negative. Now. If we wanted to actually double our ohms from four ohms to eight, combining the two, that's when you do series. And what series is, is it doesn't really matter which one, but you connect the, the positive of one terminal to the negative of the other terminal. And then basically your remaining positive and negative here are going to be uh, your, you know, your positive and negative that you would connect to the amplifier. So now let's check this ohm rating. A positive going to a negative and then we have a negative on one side and a positive on the other and when you're checking ohms it doesn't really matter your polarity because uh, resistance is the same in either direction I'm moving the table a little bit so it's fluctuating but uh, yeah where you'd think it's eight, it's not, it's more like seven. So basically in a nutshell, parallel is connecting positive to positive and negative to negative. Series is you have a positive and negative on one, positive and negative on the other, and then you connect the positive and negative from those terminals, and then the positive and negative that you are left with are your actual positive and negative that go to your amplifier. 
So now what if we have an amplifier that is, you know, stable at one ohm or lower and you're wanting to get as much power out of the amplifier as possible? Well, in this situation, I actually run both of the coils in parallel on both of the speakers. And then once you have the two speakers themselves connected in parallel, go ahead and connect both of the speakers themselves together in parallel. And now we are going to take this ohm reading and I'm going to answer a couple of comments that I got from people who insist that it's not right that I have a 0.5 ohm reading on my subs. Well, if you've been kind of doing math and figuring out how this works, you'll understand and you'll see that it will be. I mean, that is what it is. There's no trick photography. We'll move them. Let them go back. They usually set at about 0.6. Just to let you know there's no trickery. It'll go back to 0.5 or 0.6. Kind of let it uh, even out. 0.5, so uh, yeah, trap my ride. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong here. Okay, so now before we go on, I wanted to mention that it's not just these subwoofers that are a lower impedance than what they're rated. Let's start off with this is a tiny woofer from a Realistic Minimus 7. And let's check this. As you just saw, it was an 8 ohm speaker. Let me just let you know, yeah, we're hooked up to that one. 8 ohm speaker, but it sits at 6. I have another one here. Here, we'll put it up here. Maybe that'll be easier. Way easier. What does this one say? Huh. 6.5. It's not an 8 ohm speaker. Interesting. Let's grab another speaker. Dual TBX 10A. Google it. 4 ohms. <laughs> What's this one got? I know it is a 4 ohm speaker. What? What? That's not 4 ohms. All right, so before I explain why that actually is, we're gonna go into a little bit more deeper detail on that. It's not my ohm meter, my voltmeter. My voltmeter is just fine, believe me. Um, I'm gonna show you how to actually tell if your terminals are unmarked, what your polarity is. So grab a battery. This is about dead. I don't normally recommend using a nine volt, but the smaller one is your positive lead. The bigger one on a nine volt is your negative lead and batteries are always marked. I usually suggest using a double A for this, but doing this can tell us what our proper polarity is. And it's really simple. So we're gonna have the small one touching the blue and the big one touching the brown wires. And what we should get, we should have the speaker actually jump up. And the way I like to think of it is it's jumping up to embrace you, to give you a hug. And if it's reversed, it's going to actually go down or like it's wincing away from you. It's the easiest way that I could think of to remember it. So if we think we're right, we're going to hook up. I might have to get a close up of that, but I hope you can see that that's going up. Now let's go ahead and turn it around and we're going to touch the small one to the negative and the big one to the positive or basically we're going to press the positive of the battery to the negative of the speaker terminal and then the uh, negative of the battery to the positive of the speaker terminal. And it should go down. And hopefully you can see that they are both going down. So basically all you have to do is connect each terminal to the positive and negative of the battery. If it jumps up, Whatever the positive and negative of the battery is, that's the positive and negative of your speaker. If you connect them and it goes down, that means you have the polarities crossed and then uh, that will be able to tell you. All right, so back to impedance real quick. The thing about impedance and the thing with a lot of electrical components, this is pretty much an electrical component. It pretty much is a resistor as well as it's a coil. Uh, if you've heard of choke coils, stuff like that. Every single electric component like that, capacitors, all of that, the value of what they are, whether it be resistance for a resistor, capacitance for a capacitor, Henry rating for a coil, all of that, you could have 1,000 of each of them and test them one after another. Like let's say you have 
you bought a thousand resistors that are 10 ohm resistors from wherever online Mauser. And if you test every single one of them with a very, very accurate voltmeter, they're all going to be slightly different. And speakers are no different. So when you have a speaker that says that it's eight ohms, it says it's four ohms, it says it's two ohms, it says it's one ohm, whatever, don't always expect it to be exactly what that ohm rating is. Now there's a lot more science behind it and there's a lot more that we can go into on nominal ratings, stuff like that. And uh, we're not really gonna go into that. I just wanted to show how to actually wire subwoofers. I also kind of wanted to clear up those comments that I was getting. So this isn't really like, I'm not trying to start beef with anybody, but dude, if you got 6,000 subscribers uh, and you have like three or four of these subwoofers, you should know that it's possible for them to have a 0.5 ohm rating. I guess the moral of the story is to, you know, people make sure that you actually put a voltmeter on your speakers and know exactly what your ohm rating is, especially if you're wiring multiple speakers with multiple coils. But other than that, if you liked it, if it helped you out any, please consider subscribing. And also, uh, I will have a playlist up here with a lot more speaker things going on. And then we'll have a video over here with more uh, audio and video stuff going on. Or they will be switched, just like always. It's crazy how that happens. But um, yeah, get off my nuts.